Hey everyone, welcome back. We're uh, we're getting close to the home stretch here for the jeweler's lathe, so that's uh, pretty exciting. I've got the carriage done here, and that's what this video is on today. So I guess the best place to begin is the carriage housing itself. Um, it's a fairly straightforward part. You can see I've got some M4s tapped here for the um, the dovetail that's going to sit on top of that. Uh, I probably could have done that as the same part as this, but I just sort of wanted to leave myself a bit of extra room for screwing things up on the dovetail, I guess, so uh, that's why that's like that. Um, now I've got a taper cut in here, so the way this is going to work, so I'm going to have a, whoops, sorry, the taper is cut on the other side, I'm not sure. So the way this is going to work is I got a fixed dovetail here, and I'm going to have a sliding dovetail here. So as this slides up on the taper, you're going to see it gets minutely smaller, and what that's going to do is actually grab the, um, I guess, the male part of the dovetail. So, I guess we can just get started right away with putting this together. First thing is going to be to attach the fixed jaw. Um, so I guess one part of the fixed jaw that's worth noting is that I actually over drilled these holes a fair amount. So what I can do if I'm sort of really out to lunch on aligning this thing is I can just shim the fixed jaw in a little bit and that'll give me a lot more uh, lot more room for adjustment. Okay, so I'll tighten this guy on like that. Why is that? That's a tight fit. I'm sort of playing musical chairs. I'm one fastener short here. I blame Greg on Friday, not bringing home the right stuff. That Friday, Greg gets into a lot of trouble. All right, so... All right, so that's uh, pretty much fixed on there. Um, so, like I said, this is a, um, a tapered sliding gib, I guess you'd call it. One important mistake that I made that is worth mentioning, uh, normally when you see tapered gibs, you'll have um, a double dovetail, basically. So there'll be a dovetail here and then also one over here. Because when I tighten this up, there's still a little bit of freedom for it to lift like this. And that is bad news. Um, I'm going to have to keep that in mind while I tighten this thing up. Uh, that's probably going to be fixed just by me pushing down on the cross slide, but uh, still, a bit of a rookie mistake. I probably should have seen that coming. I was thinking about keying this to, to mitigate the effects of that, but put a few hours into this part and I didn't want to risk anything. So, I mean, it makes sense now that I look at it. That's why there's tapered gibs have uh, two dovetails on them, but live and learn, I guess. As you can probably see, the carriage itself is made out of aluminum. Gonna anodize that black just because I like the look of it. And then uh, these are actually both bronze. These are aluminum bronze. Um, 950 something? I forget. Anyways. Um, bit of an adventure for me to machine that. I'd never machined that before. I kind of assumed it would be just like brass, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's not just like brass. This looks for all the world like a Zed nut, but it's actually not. It's a little shuttle that sits in this groove here. And that'll go back and forth on the lead screw, and that's actually what pulls this in. It looks really sloppy the way it is now, but once everything's held in place by the dovetail, it tightens up nicely. Um, so I've got these two end plates that I laser cut. Uh, I'm pretty good at picking the worst possible colors to try to film. So these are see-through, hopefully me tilting it, you can see it a little better. Um, but what I'm going to do is just screw these onto the ends for now, and that will hold everything together. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, so that's one side done. Um, I've got to make sure I get this in the right direction. Right, okay, so what we're going to do here is I've got this. Um, this is actually the Z pusher rod. You'll notice this is actually two different parts. So it's a chrome steel rod, and then the other side is just a threaded brass rod. I did try to make this all one part, but I, uh, I sort of quickly learned that uh, threading a quarter 20 on such a slender part is pretty difficult. Plus, it took me a while to figure this out, but this is actually case hardened. So the outside sort of two millimeters is actually really hard. And that makes threading at that diameter really hard. I drilled the end at first and I was like, oh great, this is soft. This is probably just chrome plated mild steel or something. But no, it's, uh, it's case hardened. So that caused me some difficulties. So what I'm going to do here thread this in 
The other thing you should probably note is that um, these uh, the nuts I'm going to use on here, like jam nuts, aren't aren't part of the final uh, design. They're just uh, for demonstration, I guess. So I can. Um, oh, that goes in there. That's why. Alrighty. I actually didn't have uh, brass quarter 20 fasteners, so I had to go to Lowe's to buy some. It really burns my ass paying 50 cents for a nut. Oh well. Alright, so that's how that's going to work. That's um, You can see the motion's actually quite sloppy, but when it's on the dovetail, like I said, it's, um, it's a lot smoother. A couple of design notes about this. The first is that I sort of set myself the constraint of tightening it from this direction before I had, you know, looked into the viability of that. So uh, this actually took me a long time to figure out. This uh, this took me a lot of, I guess, playing with different ideas in my head until I came up with something I thought would work. Um, the big problem is when you want something to lock and stay locked, you've got to have a certain reduction ratio on, say, turns of this per, you know, Newton of force, I guess, on the dovetail. Uh, that basically ruled out eccentrics. Eccentrics are only going to lock at the sort of ends of travel. Um, and I wasn't confident I could place the end of travel exactly at the right tension, so I knew it would have to be some kind of a screw mechanism. Then I started thinking about, uh, so you have a screw in the middle here, and maybe you have two worm wheels and two arms that lock it up, kind of like a uh, like a vault. Like when vaults lock, they have the two pins that come out. But that was getting really complicated. Uh, the parts are all really small, and... I guess every time you add a part, it sort of adds a, a potential failure point. So I wanted to keep it simpler than that. Um, and then I just sort of came up with this. This sort of breaks a couple rules that I like to incorporate into designs. So I don't typically like having like an unsupported nut like this uh, pushing way out here because that's just going to twist the screw. Um, the forces in this could get quite high because it's a locking mechanism. So I'm hoping that works out okay. I do have a groove in the in the actual carriage that this rides in. But it's such a loose fit, I don't think it constrains it at all. So, um, you know, we'll see how this works out. This is, uh, <laughs> I think this is an example of me. I should probably sit down and think more about what exactly I'm going for before I arbitrarily say, oh, we'll have it locked by twisting this. Anyways, yeah. Um, so, dump all these out. So this will sit on here. Loosen it up a bit. Alrighty, so to get that on, I actually did have to loosen up the uh, the fixed side of the dovetail and let it expand out a bit. But so here we are. Um, pusher rod that also locks dovetail. So there it is locked. And then if I unlock it, it moves. Um, so now installing it in the lathe. This is um, another sort of disadvantage of this design is that you have to take the tailstock off to install it. Uh, that's just because you've got the floating shuttle thing in the bottom and uh, trying to get that aligned underneath there is, uh, is pretty rough. So um, I'll go ahead and install that now. All right, so here's the tailstock and all the linkages and all that, which you will notice are back in black, so to speak. All right, so to put this in, it's kind of tough to do this when you're also like aiming a camera with your chin. This bushing is tighter than it should be. Alrighty, there. Now I'm just going to grab a quarter inch shaft collar and put that on. All right, quarter inch shaft collar. Again, I explained this in another video, but um, for those of you just tuning in or who have forgotten, I am going to put a nice fancy knob on here for turning this to lock it up, but I haven't yet because I want to make all of the knobs on the machine itself. Actually, except maybe this one. We'll see. Perfect. All right, so that's on. 
lift the old machine with one hand. No big deal. All right, so we sit on there beautifully. Um, now, So there it is, the principle of it operating. Um, I don't want to cycle it too many times because I've got the acrylic end caps on here. Now those are not permanent whatsoever. Um, there's actually gonna be a half inch thick end cap on here and that's gonna have a pivot point for the cross slide. I just haven't totally finished the design for that yet. And there's gonna be a, a smaller end cap here but it's probably gonna be stainless steel. Um, it'll be, yeah, sort of eighth of an inch thick I think. Um, so those are changing. They're also both going to get, um, wipers on, uh, wipers for against the dovetail, just so I can keep particles out of there. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really toying with the idea of having a sort of a bearing setup in the, uh, on this side, maybe or on this side, just to take some of the pulling, pushing forces without adding too much friction. Uh, we'll see how that goes. That those would probably be pairs of thrust bearings. Um, I don't really like working with thrust bearings because at this size they're extremely weak and take like sort of 10 pounds to crush them which is unfortunate um, and then if you get any bigger you get sort of thrust roller bearings they get just too big to use here so a bit of a problem um, but yeah overall I mean it seems to work fairly well um, it's, uh, it's not really tuned up or anything I feel like I should have maybe tuned it started the video and then taken it apart or something um, and then maybe played it backwards and made it look like I was putting it together. I don't know. Um, all in all though, it's, um, I don't know if it's the best solution to a design problem, but it's certainly a solution. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with it. It seems to work fairly well. Um, yep. So next up is going to be cross slide mechanism. Like I said, there's going to be a pivot point on here. So I'm going to have to finish that up and we're just going to stack the axes on from there. Um, I realize so far it hasn't been particularly clear what I mean by jeweler's lathe and all these different axes. So we're going to get into that soon. Um, there's basically going to be uh, a cross slide across here like this. And then there's going to be a compound on that. And then there's going to be a compound on that. I know that sounds crazy, but we're going to see if we can make it work. And if we can't, we're going to say it was only an idea and we didn't even want to make it work. So there. Um, so let's do some other channel updates and then we can look at the machining footage also known as Greg learns all about bronze so one thing that a lot of people have recommended that I look into a little more has been epoxy granite don't forget that um, epoxy granite is something that I have zero experience with um, I've been following along with a few builds that use it and I've been quite impressed uh, at least by the way it looks, it looks amazing. So, uh, you know, I have no experience on how it works, but let's uh, let's try it out. Um, I got some West System epoxy here. I've got some, uh, actually some scrap garnet from the water jet cutter, believe it or not. And um, I've got a couple projects planned. I've got a really easy one to start with. Um, and then I've got a sort of little bit more ambitious one, but I think certainly doable. And it's certainly something I can, you know, scrap and try again if it doesn't work. And then I've got a really ambitious project that I would prefer to not have to scrap and start again. So I'm going to hopefully pick up the lessons that I need to know before then. And yeah, I mean, I figure might as well record it and uh, see exactly uh, how this goes. Um, so yeah, keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. That should be coming fairly soon. Um, probably after the jeweler's lathe is finished, but um, you never know. I may need a week off from the jeweler's lathe if I've design myself into a corner again so yep um that should be exciting another thing that's coming actually is my girlfriend's mother is coming to stay with us for a couple of days and she's staying in the guest bedroom and uh that's where i do all my magic so um my sort of shop away from shop is in the guest bedroom and i've got all my shit in here uh, I've got all my parts, so I'm going to have to do some fairly serious cleaning. Um, 
And I think what I might do is record part of that. I know a cleaning video isn't going to be very exciting, but uh, I've sort of worked out a system of, of, you know, I guess storing industrial components in residential areas that I, you know, it might be worth going over and talking about. Um, I've also got lots of parts around my house. Um, so what I was thinking of doing is maybe going over my inventory bin by bin, covering some of the fundamentals of some of the components in my kingdom of dirt. 